If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TV World 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be taking a look at the fifth place back from Oceana. We've been doing it in order first, second, third, fourth, and now fifth. Bert Walters, who finished day one, I believe, was first seed and also went into <coughs> top eight as first seed, if I'm not mistaken. Um, ended up losing in top 8, which is really unfortunate. I know he's made top 8 quite a couple of times. Um, he made back-to-back -to -back top 8s at Ocean Internationals as well. But he hasn't been able to get past top 8 and get that coveted trophy. Um, station ADP, we have ADP to use Alter Creation GX in order to get the energy down and, <clears throat> and um, Use the GX attack in order to get extra damage and extra prizes. We have Station V, the new big card of the set. 220 HP, almost as much as tag teams, only worth two prizes. A great ability in Intrepid Sword that makes adds consistency to attack and a very powerful Brave Blade attack to him. 230 or 260 after Alter Creation, where Vitality Banner Shrine puts you above the threshold of 270 or even 280 combining both in order to one kill the attack team. We have Fionn BBQ, Absol and Rangu for text as well as Jirachi and the DNA for Draw Engine. And we have our good Metal Saucer, we have Custom Catchers. It's a very straightforward list, a very consistent list. A little on the lower side of the supporters, I would say. Surprised not seeing a Malolana here, surprised not seeing an extra copy of Marnie or maybe Cynthia, but he does compensate by playing the couple of the Denny's. So, let's jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this Oceana 5th place deck. Thick card indeed. That would be a great way to describe Station. It is a thick boy a thick card um i guess station doesn't really have a gender doesn't necessarily mean it mean it's male could be female station so thick girl thick boy i don't know where i guess <laughs> i'm going crazy now all right my opponent won't be able to attack my hand on turn one i'm gonna expect her to play a reset stab on turn one so she does start um station i mean adp just right off the bat I would say that's a pretty lucky start. Pretty, pretty lucky start. Um, that seems like the card I can get rid of. I will establish the ADP. I do have the three cards. <coughs> Not likely I find one of the water energies this particular turn. However, possibly finding it next turn. I just needed an energy though, for sure in order to attach to the ADP, get that damage, get that extra damage rolling. Um, do I want to play the Shrine? It both helps and hurts me. Um, both hurts and helps me. Uh, I'm liking the Great Catcher more. This hand is horrible though. This hand is so bad. This hand is so bad. Okay, I mean the Marnie is useful. The less of a chance that I find the water, but I don't think I can afford to Professor's Research. Another Research, the Switches, the Metal Saucers, the One Capture. 
Dentene. <laughs> Alright, my opponent goes ahead and Marty's for me, so I'll gladly take that. Make is awkward, Pezpen, really? Is that happening for anyone else? Like make like what's what's wrong with it? Okay. <clears throat> I do find this my thing. <laughs> My Guzma Hall is prized, unfortunately. Alright, so we're just gonna have to roll with this. I'm gonna do this, get back the research. <laughs> well. Oh, well. Oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm not winning this game. Not only... Not only... <laughs> not only did I not hit a single energy this turn, but also... I didn't even get an attachment. All I have is Professor's Research. Oh my, this is so bad. <laughs> I have three research in hand now. If my Guzma Hala hadn't been prized, this would have been fine. This would have been perfectly, perfectly fine. Oh well. Tackle into Malolana? Yep. So my opponent just starting with everything in hand. Just starting with everything in hand. And we have 100% lost the game. Like, you can't be this far behind in a mirror match, where your opponent has already GX'd and has two threats, and you haven't even GX'd. So... <laughs> No point in continuing that game. Absolutely no point. I don't think going second was wrong. It just so happened that my opponent started the ADP, started the water, right? I had a chance to play two supporters to find the water and I still didn't find it. So it's not wrong that I chose to go second. It's just that I didn't get as lucky as my opponent to start with the right hand, right? <clears throat> Smile on an ADP even worth it. I think so. Sometimes just for the searchable switch effect, as we saw right right then and there with my opponent, sometimes just for the switchable switchable <laughs> for the searchable switch effect, that's gonna be worth it. Yeah, sometimes just that alone will make it worth it. Alright. Hello, Anito Caesar. I win the coin flip. I will choose to go second. I will stay true. I will stay true to to what I keep preaching. <laughs> I will stay true to what I keep preaching. Does this list play E-Switch? No, it does not. This list did not play Energy Switch. All right, we're up against Mew3. Let him go first. So we're not getting core housed. We are getting to play. We are going to be able to play a Marty. There's the Marcargo GX that we've been talking about and immediately confirms Welder Mew3 rather than Malamar Mew3. So no chance of horror house, in fact. <coughs> you see a Jirachi. What's my feeling about Baby Blounds task complete? It's a good deck. It's a, it's a pretty good deck. It's very powerful. Um, it's also very predictable and therefore, and it's also very susceptible to hand disruption. Even with the Lucky X and whatnot, it's very susceptible to hand disruption, so that's something I'm not a big fan of. Alright, so I will consider not using the Marnie and going for the research instead. <laughs> Okay, so now I price my two <laughs> ADPs for whatever reason. Um, all right, that will change my game plan. Good morning, time and drummer. I don't want Fion. I think I want either. No, I think I want another station for sure. Um, do you think Molly heading into the next few cups is going to run hot given our players looking to play the new stuff? It seems very strong. I agree. I think Molly has a lot going for it in terms of it's a very accessible deck. It's a very powerful deck and it just got a huge consistency boost with Professor's Research and Quick Ball. 
So I do think Malamar um, heading into the new into the into the next few cups is going to be really really good. Okay, so I'm not playing Custom Catcher for one because what could I possibly draw that I don't want to discard? And I wasn't going to Teddy Change because I don't want that liability in on my bench. So I'm gonna play this, which immediately shuts off the Mew 3, which is great, right? Obviously that's great. I will thin this. And, <clears throat> I mean, there's no point in looking for anger to put this back in order to just draw it. So I'm just going to do this. What? <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> Intrepid sword for three medals. When you're only playing nine, the chances of that happening, especially with one in hand, that I already had, and I won in this card, so I had <coughs> seven left in the deck, and they just so happened to be my next three top cards. That's pretty insane. That's pretty insane, not gonna lie. Um, right, so I guess that compensates a little for the fact that I didn't get, I am literally unable to play ADP this game. <laughs> Um, ADP Sage and Mirror feels like Reshizard Kiawe, the way to win is to go first. I mean, why? If you go first, that means you GX first, so you're always going to start with an ADP and an energy in hand? I disagree. Unless he has 3 the Dene Prize, why did he go for the Dene? Probably has Welder. Maybe. Yep. Okay. That was, that was weird like i didn't even need to hit an energy you know because i just needed one metal saucer and i could have started attacking next turn but i'm not gonna complain <clears throat> that means i get to save all my metal saucers for the late game to get very easy back-to-back -back stations and that's all you can ask for really that is all you can ask for okay so i'm very happy that this mu3 can't attack right now unless my opponent finds hood off of stellwish or he already has it We'll see. That was really weird. That was really weird to see. Really, really weird to see. But I'm happy. I'm happy about it. Definitely happy about it. Cherish Ball. <clears throat> I mean, and what's better than than a clean uh, than a clean Sage and V, right? My button could have knocked me out with uh, Charizard. He could have also Turbo Strike, but. No ability means no no power up. All right, and I top deck the metal saucer. So see, like even if I didn't hit a single metal energy off of those three cards, I would have had the metal saucer, and then I just need to find one energy. So I got lucky, but it also wasn't like crucial to my success, you know. Uh, I kind of want to play Goose Mahala. I actually kind of want to play the Goose Mahala just for the um, stadium just for the stadium i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna switch i'm gonna do this I'm a metal saucer and maybe this is where i did a change yeah fill up my hand with resources maybe i shouldn't have tackles if this was my plan i probably should have like sequence this a little better but i'm happy taking this ko i'm happy with the shrine ticks if the shrine manages to stick for one more turn <laughs> for one more turn um then my vitality band can get me there with the mewtwo i don't have the vitality band i don't have kuzma hall anymore but it's an option right and if it ends up staying for two turns then that's all i need oh actually no if, th if this sticks this turn then I have knock on the Mew 3. Well, it won't. Okay, fair enough. That's the third gen heart for my opponents. Fair enough. Okay. I don't think I mind this too much though. Steel needs to find the stealthy hood. And then if I find my um, my life center labs at some point, I turn that off. Right? Which is also good. I do like the idea of a heavy a heavy shrine Sajian deck though. I do like the idea of that. 
a more turbo-ish heavy station deck. Right, we see the Tene, we see two fires lost. Really digging for that stealthy hood. I mean, you would expect my opponent to find it here. <coughs> yep, there it is. So... Wasn't the reset stamp good to play? I mean, he had six cards, right? And yeah, exactly. Like, I, I know he doesn't have Stealthy Hood in those six cards. If I reset stamp, I give him a chance to find Stealthy Hood off of those new six cards or to play a supporter or a Detene in order to find a Stealthy Hood. So he actually gets to look at like 13 different cards in one turn. Whereas if I don't play the reset stamp, then he only gets to see uh, six new cards in order to find the hood. Yeah, that's like the the idea behind it. Um, yeah, I can lose one Metal Saucer. I can definitely lose one Metal Saucer. Or I can just put it back. That works too. Conserve the Metal Saucer. And find an Aurora Energy. That doesn't really matter. I'm not even gonna bother benching the ADP now. And... I do find the stadium, which is nice. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discard this Jirachi. I do have another station, which is what I need. I also prized two metal saucers. So that's not very nice. I also prized two metal saucers. Uh, yeah, Brave Blade it is. I pressed two metal saucers, that's insane. This is gonna be a weird game for sure. He had seven. Okay, still, like one card difference because of the possibility of the stealthy hood. I thought I saw six. But I didn't consider it because I knew off of those seven, there was no stealthy hood in there. Do you think old Mildex need an Aerodactyl for the Stinger play? Um, I mean, Aerodactyl just slows it down by one turn, right? High Rook Steady. I mean, it's definitely good, but the most successful Sinchino mill deck was the, the least tech tap. It didn't have Wolfet and it didn't have Redactyl. Right? So unlucky, but so lucky. <laughs> sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we get unlucky. It's easier to, ex to remember the unlucky times because you don't expect but like you're not looking forward to getting unlucky so when it, ha it happens you you're like Meh, that sucked right but when you get lucky it doesn't stand out as much because you're happy about it and um, sometimes getting lucky means like that's what you were expecting anyways right <clears throat> Your Mew3 KOs a Mew3 with our Dactyl's GX attack. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Then yeah, maybe that's worth it. I didn't realize that, you're right. You are right. They go for that for three and then your Mew3 with one, right? One kills them. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. I mean, it seems like a very solid play for sure. Seems like a very solid play for sure. Okay, so we're both having slow turns this time around. Uh, I'll go ahead and prime it with um, this. Uh, great catcher doesn't really help me unless I really wanted to go great catcher onto the Mew3. Which might not be terrible, but retreating feels awful here. Training field softball. I think I'm just gonna pass here. Oh no, I should have. Oh, why did I not Intrepid Sword? Duh, Pablo. <clears throat> Come on, Pablo, why did you not Intrepid Sword? <sighs> My point just has their raw two energies. Okay, then I'm pretty sure we are dead here. Surprising two ADPs. 
happens once every 100 games. So you just saw a... You just saw the 1%. <laughs> you just saw the 1%. Yeah, you would have to play Fighting Energy or you could just play Rainbows, right? So that way you have access to both Mark Argo and our attack fills, GX attack. You could just play Auroras or Rainbows in that case, right? Maybe not Rainbows because if they have Mimikyu for some reason, then the damage counter would stop you from attacking. So I was playing two fire, one fighting. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Playing a combination seems all right. Okay. So this time my opponent did let me go second or first rather. And it just so happened, it just so happens that I started with a brilliant hand, right? This could have easily been not great. Okay, so we'll still wish, grab the quick ball. I'll bench, I'll bench. I'll attach. And then, kind of liking our anger. Just for the extra thin, the extra reach. I'm it with some meh intrepid sword. I guess it didn't matter if I was just gonna intrepid sword anyways, but that's fine. That's fine. It's good for after the Marnie. And Johnstan, thank you so much for watching and <laughs> for the kind and words, you can't ordinary rot it back, that's true. But if you're playing three three auroras, then you can just make sure you keep one in your hand, right? And you don't discard, you prioritize other things. Um, basic fire does feel so nice because of rot. Agreed. Do you prefer to go second with ADP Sajin? I personally prefer to go second. I feel like going second gives you a higher chance at establishing an ADP with an energy on turn one, which is what you want to do. Right? If you choose to go first and you just you assume you have an energy, you assume you have a way to get ADP, and that's not going to be the case, always. Um, Alright, so that's Turtonator looking pretty scary right there. Looking pretty scary. This hand's also very scary. Uh, this hand's also very scary. I'm gonna lose the two customs. I could or anger one, but I don't think I need to. Um, I already played a supporter, so I am not. <laughs> I am not going to be able to use my GX attack this turn. Uh, well, I still have a chance. There's still a a non-zero percent chance that I can pull this off. So I'm just gonna try to whisk on the research. Nope. Not quite. Alright. So I'm definitely gonna power up. Definitely gonna touch. Definitely gonna bench this and I'm gonna use this guy's intrepid sword. If I lose the Jirachi, I lose the Jirachi and that's completely okay. All right, <clears throat> comes down to preference and deck building in a way. I definitely think there there will be like a, a right answer for that, you know. <clears throat> First is always the best. Uh, I disagree. Big disagree. Big disagree. This is what. <laughs> this, this is what we've talked about. What we have talked about a lot lately, though, that's for sure. Um, I mean, the Shrine damages both of these guys, but also... <laughs> Do I care about this hand at all? I definitely don't. I'm gonna attach it here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and... I'm gonna go ahead and thin the other ADP. I won't be needing a third station, that's for sure. Um, that's what we've been talking about for, it feels every every stream, we end up in a discussion of whether 
going first or second is right. And I like there's no I don't like ever using the word always in Pokemon. I feel very strongly about choosing to go second, no matter what. Why the unit? This is the fifth place list. The unit so that you can search for it with Guzmahala and sometimes you can't afford to discard something with Aurora energy. So playing the one unit won't really stop or reduce your chances of attacking with Seijin greatly, but it will put a little more ease into your resources where you don't have to discard a card in order to play it like the Aurora energy states. Why not pimp out Seijin to the max with the Golden Arts? I mean, I've never, I, I compare the Golden Art to the <coughs> to the Rainbow Rares, I could do it. <laughs> I could do it, I just, um, I like the, the full art. People prefer to see the Golden one, I can easily use the Golden one. If someone played Seeking, they would have won, right, Irix Daddy? <laughs> so real talk. Should I do the 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 sub sub challenge or sub sub goal subscriber goal on Twitch to hit to play seeking at a tournament? Should I do it? Would people support that? Like people, some there are some people who subscribe every month to support me no matter what, right? But would people actually like would would the promise of me playing? I feel like if I KO the Turtonator, I just win the game, right? So I'm gonna go for that. I don't think I'll have time for Absol, so I'm just gonna do this to thin as much as possible. Go ahead and Stella Wish. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect Rui. Yeah, I would not be surprised if my opponent just concedes here. I would absolutely not be surprised if my opponent just concedes right away. I'll put back the research, getting a switch, and then ultimate ray, two prizes, that's really nice, and power up this station. Would people who are not subscribers be interested, or would someone watching on YouTube consider, consider subscribing on Twitch even if you don't always catch the live streams in order for me to play the Seeking deck? <laughs> I'll think about it, yeah? Maybe I'll make that a goal for March streams. I'll make that a goal for the March streams. You know what, I think it works out nicely. Like, we could make it a goal, I'm thinking. If we get to 65 subscribers, I'll play Seeking at a League Challenge. If we get 85 or 90 subscribers, no, no, never mind. If I get 60 subscribers, I'll play Seeking <coughs> at a League Challenge, okay? At a League Challenge before the new set comes out. If I get to 80 subscribers, I will play Seeking at a League Cup, okay? So where the stakes are higher. And if I get to 120 subscribers, I'll play Seeking at one of the side events in Europe, in the EUIC, okay? So, I mean, if I'm, unless I make it to the finals, of course, which is obviously my goal. My goal is to win the tournament. But if I don't make day two, I would play Seeking at the League Cup on Saturday. And if I don't, if I make day two, but I don't make the finals, then I would play Seeking at the League Challenge on Sunday. I, does that seem like a decent, um, a decent, a decent, decent proposal? I think that seems fair, right? Irix Daddy, I did see the raid and I thanked her for it. <clears throat> I thanked her for it um, at the beginning of today's stream and I will definitely be making a tweet because I didn't notice it until this morning. I will definitely be making a tweet to thank her for the raid. It was very kind of her to raid me. All right, so I'm gonna go Great Catcher, grab the ADP. Grab the ADP. I'm gonna attach to it. I'm gonna go ahead and play Shrine. 
I'm gonna go ahead and bench this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and Intrepid Sword. This is a really nice combination of cards. This is actually perfect. <coughs> I get to Guzma Holloway, whatever I top deck, and the research, I get to go grab the water energy, I get to attach it, and then I get to Tele Change. Well, never mind. <laughs> when is EUIC? EUIC is um, mid April. Did you see a new stable that are coming out in the new set, Pestman? I don't pay too much attention to new sets until um, until they're about to be out because Sword and Shield just became legal this weekend. So whatever cards are coming out in the next set, they don't matter to me until May because I have a tournament. I have a regional to win this weekend. I have a um, I have a regional to week to win in two weeks time in Toronto. So I really, really don't care too much for future sets. Oh my god. Oh, this is terrible. Because the GX attack shuffles everything back. And how do you recover from that with Metal Saucers? But can I really afford to lose two Metal Saucers right here? I don't think I can. Three now. Ugh. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Only one Tama Drummer out of six boxes? That's insane. I mean, you can sell the gold one, right? You should sell it, definitely. And that equates to two, maybe three stations? That's really unlucky, though. I'm so sorry. I'm sure, like, by reselling cards from the set, you could. Um, you could get the set, right? But that's really harsh. One station out of a full case, that is super, super, super harsh. You don't think boss's order will be good? That's Lysander, right? It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be amazing. 100% it's gonna be amazing. All right, so I do have resistance, which is nice, but it's not like, ooh, I'm gonna win because of that. All right. Oh, the shrine is still ticking. That's pretty good. Okay, Primate Wisdom. All right. So I'm gonna switch. And then I'm gonna GX. And then my opponent goes for his GX attack. But that's okay, I feel. I can afford to lose this. I'm fairly sure I can afford to lose this. I just, I can't afford to lose all my Metal Saucers. That I can't. That I can't. I can afford to lose one, but not all, like not two and not three. <laughs> yeah, boss's order could be as much as a four off. Especially with Drachi and the Tenane format, boss's order is going to completely change the game once again. A lot more balanced than Kuzma, potentially, right? Potentially. Okay, so interesting. And my opponent chooses to target down the station. The shrine is still ticking. Okay. There is a universe where I get very lucky and I get return KO with Station. But do I need to though? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I put it back. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? But no, I, I put it at the top with Primate Wisdom. Oof. I should try to go for it, right? Well, no, actually I shouldn't. Actually, I shouldn't. Nah. Um, if I Fion, who does he promote? Well, I guess let's find out. <laughs> I guess let's find out. I'm not gonna attach the energy. I do not want to reveal that I have the energy. I don't care about this guy. Ooh, does bring in this guy, interesting. All right. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and ultimate right here. I'll power up. <clears throat> oh my gosh, the shrine is going to ruin me. This does 160. Oh, the shrine is going to ruin me. I need to capture the shrine this next turn. <laughs> oopsies. And I can't actually. Oopsies. Big oopsies. I can't counter the shrine. Oh, I'm gonna lose. Well, I'm gonna need... Yeah, I'm gonna need a reset stamp. I'm gonna need to power this guy up, of course. And I'm gonna need a reset stamp. The well, one that doesn't matter at all. <clears throat> it matters... <coughs> it matters... Maybe the Fion was actually a bad play. Yeah, I've lost, probably, because of the Shrine. Because I played that quick ball preemptively. Okay. I'm hoping I'll... Oh, no. Oh, this guy already died. I thought it was dying in between turns. It's fine. That's good, though. That's actually good. A skateboard leaves this rotation. This will hurt. Yeah. Skateboard leaving will definitely hurt a little. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Right. And then hear me out. I am going to Primate Wisdom the Metal Saucer. I am going to attach, and I am guaranteed a metal saucer off the top. Oh, but I didn't hit a switch. Or the... <laughs> I didn't hit a switch. I hit three professors research. What the heck? Uh, I need switch and reset stamp. I need one of my two switches, and I need reset stamp. Otherwise, I've lost. Can I do it? Well... That's useful. That is most certainly useful. Um, you know what? If I can our switch, let's have two shots at this reset stamp. <clears throat> All right. Come on, Stellwish. No. Okay. Well, that's it, though, right? <laughs> that is it. Uh, yeah, that is it. Is it? Yes, that is it. Okay. So we just have to hope that my opponent doesn't have a grass energy in hand. If he does, then we've lost. If he doesn't, then, well, maybe we win. Not with this hand, but I'm getting four prizes, so... Research for three research, right? Research for three research. Well, I have a switch. My opponent immediately promotes though, so you will have the grass, you will KO me. Not much you can do. Just drew pretty badly overall. I drew pretty badly with this with this list overall. I drew so awkwardly and like I drew three metal saucers combined at once, three professors research combined at once. If I stamp, I'm fairly sure I win, but oh well. Oh well geez. Okay. <clears throat> so, Sage and ADP, still pretty powerful, still pretty good. Just don't draw like I do. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just don't draw like I do. <clears throat> and with that, I will be finishing the stream. I do have a few things to do. I need to go to the bank, most importantly of all, which is super annoying and I hate being an adult because I need to go to the bank, but I will go to the bank. So, I will catch you in the afternoon stream. I do plan on streaming later today. I'm hoping to stream later today at about 1 p.m. probably. 1 p.m.-ish, we'll see. That's my goal. Hopefully, see you there. It's not the list fault, not at all. It's just variance. It happens other times. I won't draw those three cards combined. Um, it's definitely not the list fault. The list got to fifth place at OCIC. First seat, day one. First seat, day two. The list is really really good so yeah if you're watching on youtube don't forget to leave a like it really helps out the channel wilson thank you so much for the follow we are four follows away from 5500 people on twitch so if you haven't followed yet don't forget to do that and i will see you later today in the afternoon stream 
Thank you so much, and until next time. Bye-bye.